Want to patent your invention? The chance is near. You've given it heart. Now get it in gear. It's Passage to Profit with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. This is Richard Gearhart. And Elizabeth Gearhart. Of Gearhart Law. Welcome to Passage to Profit. At Passage to Profit, we're all about making a positive impact on the future with new products, new businesses, and interesting projects that make life easier and better. And we hope you find the tools you need to move your ideas forward, like the free half-hour consultation we give at Gearheart Law, the sponsor of this show, to those who need advice on protecting their ideas and brands. Just call us at 908-273-0700 and say you heard about us on the show. We'll book your free half-hour phone call or in-person consultation at our office in New York, New Jersey, or Philly. Come ready with your questions. It's all confidential, so no one else will hear your idea from anyone at Gearheart Law. Your ideas are safe with Gearheart Law. And if you want to be on the show, sign up for a Passage to Profit meetup and pitch your idea to us over the phone. Just remember that you have to come to New York City to tape the show. Go to the meetup website or just Google Passage to Profit and sign up. It's that simple. Gearheart Law sponsors Passage to Profit, so you can get eight minutes of airtime on this major New York station with your only payment being your promotion of the show. Last week, our pitch contestants got a total of over 3,500 votes, so it's a great opportunity for you and your business to gain exposure. The record so far is 7,116 votes in seven days mainly through promotion on social media. So after the pitches, you, our listeners, can go to the Passage to Profit page at GearheartLaw.com and vote for your favorite pitch. That's GearheartLaw, G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-L-A-W.com. The voting lasts for a week, but everyone only gets to vote once. So tell all your friends, all your social networks, everybody you know to go and vote for you. And if they can't remember the name of the show, just try to remember it by imagining walking down a passage with a huge pot of gold at the end. Passage to profit. And may your passage be short and your profit be huge. Our guest tonight, Lee Isaacson. Lee is the CEO and co-founder of DIG, the Dog Persons Dating App. Dig celebrates the passion and commitment of dog lovers throughout the Dig app with dog-friendly events nationwide and by building a dedicated community of single dog lovers. Dig is the best way for dog lovers to find a compatible match and plan a dog-friendly date. Lee has a background in news reporting, homeland security, and nonprofit management and lives in New Orleans with her German short-haired pointer, Penny. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell us, what was your inspiration for your app? The inspiration for the app. So I started Dig with my sister, Casey Isaacson. She was dating a guy who tried to be a dog person for her. And by the end of the relationship, he didn't want the dog in his apartment. He would put towels down on the couch so the dog didn't touch anything. And she said to me, I wish I just knew from the start that this wasn't going to work because of my dog. We looked into it. 55% of single adults in the U.S. are pet owners, with dogs leading the way. So you're already entering a relationship where there may already be a relationship in the house you want to deal with, right? (laughs) You're going to be second no matter what. And so we wanted to build this community where you could have the right type of conversations. This is about your lifestyle. You know, does the dog sleep in your bed? Right. All these things that really, truly (laughs) matter in a relationship. You can have those conversations by leading dog first. So you have these questionnaires, not only about do you have a dog, but you go into a lot of detailed questions about, well, what kind of dogs do you like and what what do you let your dog do? Is that right? You know, right now we encourage people to answer different questions, but none of it's required. We don't want you to have to sit and fill out a million different things. Dog people... It, it means something different to everybody. You've got people in New York who are carrying their chihuahuas in their purse on the subway, and you've got people down in Louisiana throwing their hunting dogs in the back of the pickup truck, right? So we didn't want to try to define what being a dog person means to you. We just want to find you your match for your dog lifestyle. So do you think relationships work better if both people are pet lovers, is, is there are there any kind of statistics on that? <laughs> That's a really interesting question. When you think about a dog person, especially if you are one, you're thinking about someone who's likely more trustworthy, maybe a little bit more athletic, you know, someone that can read body language, right? So you're looking for all these traits in a person already, and that's how dog people think about each other. And so, you know, whether a dog person's better than a not dog person, I'm not going to go into that. (laughs) But it's amazing the type of traits you look for and how they really come into play when you're talking about your dog. 
Well, I'm a cat person. And when Richard and I met, I had cats. He oh, you're not, not... going to tell the story, are you? <laughs> he put, no, he put up with the cats. He's like, I'm allergic, but he got used to him after a while. But our son is 27, and he lives with his girlfriend down in Maryland. And incredible story. She rescued this dog that was in a bag of dead puppies. It was the only live one left. Oh it was on the goodness. side of the road. So she rescued it. And, of course, that dog was very protective of that relationship. So when our son came in on the scene... Dog was not too happy, but now they're best friends. Oh, that's great. That's a great story. And, you know, when we built the app, we thought about stories like this all the time because not all dogs get along. You know, not all dogs and all people get along. And so our point is you need to know that up front. You need to be able to enter the relationship and have those conversations about what will work and consider everyone involved. So do you recommend that the people bring the dogs with them on the first date? We think the best first date is the dog park, right? And <laughs> so you're, you're playing, you get to see your dogs interacting with other dogs, you're talking, but you, you're a little bit distracted. Uh, my sister always laughs at me when I say this, but I think it means a lot when you see a guy pick up poop on the first date. You're like, okay, yeah, <laughs> check. Uh, He'll be good with the diapers <laughs> later right, on. Right, exactly. I think it says a lot. And so we really encourage that. And there are so many cool businesses opening up that are dog friendly now, too. More and more restaurants, more things you can do, festivals where you can bring your dog. And so on the app, you can actually plan a dog friendly date when you match with someone. So you can find the closest dog park to you and suggest that as a first date idea right away. Get right off the app. Find out if you're truly compatible by meeting up. So are you hosting events for dogs and dog lovers? Oh, you bet. (laughs) There's nothing more fun. So the way we've been getting the word out about Dig across the country has been throwing big dog-friendly parties city by city. We partnered with WeWork, and so we've been launching in different WeWork locations across the country. And we just have we just threw our uh, event in Los Angeles recently. We had 850 people plus their dogs. So you know when you're picturing that many people, double the amount of space you need, right, with the leash and the dog. <laughs> we, had, we had 37 different local dog businesses giving away things like free treats, for, uh, ask the vet booth, dog massages. We had a masseuse there. Of course, everything. Yeah, <laughs> just celebrating dogs and love in each community. And so it's something for you to do, get out and meet people through these dig events. And it's just really, really fun. So how do people find these events? So you can go to digdates.com. That's our website. Uh, We have an upcoming event section. It's really fun to look through the photos of past events. We always have great footage, as you can imagine, just really fun, happy people and happy (laughs) videos everywhere. Um, And on the app itself, we have an event announcement. And so on the app, as you're looking through people and their pups, uh, as you're looking to date someone, you can also get a daily deal from different pet companies and look at those event announcements right from the app. So you have pictures of the people, too. So you can see what someone looks like before you would go on a date? Do you get to see their dog, too? Absolutely, (laughs) yeah. So if you have a dog, you have a section of your profile for you and a full separate section for your dog in there as well. (laughs) That's great. So uh, we've got to take a break now. This is hilarious and fascinating. You're listening to Passage to Profit with Richard and Elizabeth Gerhardt. Our special guest is Lee Isaacson from DigDates.com. We'll be right back after this commercial message. There's never been a better time to start your own business. The opportunities are infinite and only limited by your imagination and enthusiasm. At Gerhardt Law, we believe the most successful companies all have one thing in common. They start with a solid foundation first. Gerhardt Law has years of experience protecting entrepreneurs, ideas, and brands using patent, trademark, and copyright protection. So if you have a new consumer product, a new software application that you're planning to build or sell, or a brand or company name that you want to protect, contact the experts at www.gearheartlaw.com. Our professionals will create a custom strategy designed to fit your needs and your budget. All of our attorneys are passionate about protection, licensed, and qualified to represent you before the United States state's patent and trademark office don't start your project without calling us first visit gearheartlaw.com together we can change the world visit g-e-a-r-h-a-r-t-l-a-w.com this ad has been read by a non-attorney spokesperson now back to passage to profit once again richard and elizabeth gearheart we have as our special guest today lee isaacson the co-founder of dig the dating app for dog lovers the dog person's dating app thank you so much (laughs) dig 
like the dog person's dating app. <laughs> All the above. <laughs> dog people, your dog persons, whatever you want to call it. It's puppy love, right? <laughs> so you told us something really interesting, two things in the break. One, you're hiring all over the country, and two, you have investment funding now. So we would love to hear that story. Oh, man, was that fun, getting that first investment check. That makes a big difference, and I'm sure we'll hear from all the people pitching today, you know, just how much that can change everything for you. So but how much did you get? We got our first good check. <laughs> <laughs> Enough to cover this business. <laughs> I will say we are still fundraising, so we're raising a $750,000 seed round, um, and we are about halfway there. Great. Yeah. Great, great. Thank you. So for the past year, we've been getting the word out about Dig across the country through these events like we talked about. And those events have really covered their own cost. So without having to raise money, we had companies pay to be featured at our events, sponsor them. And that would bring partnerships that would bring individual downloads as people came to the event. And press would usually cover those events because... Like, it's dogs and love. Right? Like it's, it's a I great can, show, story. You know, babies and animals, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> we can do it. Uh, and so that worked great for a while, but we knew we had to get some advertising out there. You have to do something in between all of these events to maintain those markets. And so we really went, you know, pitching all the time, um, looking for investment, got that first investment. Now we are hiring across the country brand ambassadors to work in all these cities that we've launched in. And we are launching in six more cities in just the next few months. We've got events planned in Portland, in Miami, in Denver, in Seattle, and we are just full steam ahead. Great, great. So what do the brand ambassadors do? At first, whatever they wanted. <laughs> as, as a CEO and co-founder, we said, if you want to work with us and you recognize that we don't have anything to pay you right now, um, mm. anything you do, we'll take it off my plate. Right. And so we worked with some people who said, uh, I can help plan events. We said uh, we worked with someone who said, I know a bunch of Instagram influencers. Right. And so people came to us and just said, I want to see Dig in my city. How can I help? And they've worked with us for the past few months for nothing. They just wanted to see Dig do well. That's very passionate. People who have Amazing. dogs are passionate people and they thought it was a good thing. And so there you are. They're willing to donate their time. And so many people, animal lovers do. I mean, at all sorts of volunteer shelters and so forth, this is perfect, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and we are so thankful. And, you know, we, uh, my sister and I have been working for about a year and a half before a salary as well. And so this is just a team of really dedicated people who wanted to make this work. But there's nothing like seeing the whites of people's eyes when you tell them about a dog person's dating app. And they just go, oh! <gasps> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> right. And that just keeps you going, especially at these events where you have hundreds of users all at the same time telling you how much they love your product and want to meet their guy through Dig. That's mm. pretty cool. So do you get people who don't currently have a dog? Like I'm thinking of my daughter here. Her last boyfriend was allergic to cats. So she loves cats, but she couldn't have them with him. So she... I told her she can't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you asked that um, because half of our users don't have a dog yet. And that's something we learn about each city. Not every city is as dog friendly as maybe New York or Chicago or L.A. Places like Boston don't have as much dog friendly housing, for example. So you see a lot more people who are living alone in apartments for the first time that can't have a dog. So one of our best ads out right now is date someone with a dog. <laughs> Simple, clear, get the to advice the point. used to be make a friend with a boat. Now <laughs> date yeah. a friend with a dog. Yes. Let them pick up the poop. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So how did your entrepreneurial journey begin? I, you mentioned uh, you were passionate, motivated to start the business. But how did you get the app made? How did you market it? Tell us everything. Great, great question, because every entrepreneur just has to bring their strengths. And the first thing they have to do is truly understand their own weaknesses. And how do you go forward and how do you supplement that? What team do you build around you? So I, like I said, I started with my sister. She is extraordinarily talented. She can, what we say is that she makes things look good. I make things sound good, right? She comes from, <laughs> <laughs> she comes from the advertising design world. She designed the app itself. Uh, she does all of our marketing. I should say, and we're very proud of this, all of our marketing and our Instagram photos all feature adoptable dogs from Louisiana area shelters. So Aww. that's been a huge mission for us as well is to incorporate that everywhere we can. But we, we basically look and said, uh, you know, we think we'd be able to get the word out. We have this events background from my nonprofit world. I've got the journalism background from my TV news world. 
Casey's incredibly talented, makes everything look good. What's missing? Oh, someone to build the app itself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> missing so far, piece. it looks good on paper. <laughs> yeah. So one of the first things we did was we found a local accelerator program uh, in New Orleans, and they helped us connect to our um, chief technology officer, who we brought in right away, equally as passionate uh, about dogs, about love, about this project with us. Um, and together, we got the app built, working with an offshore development team. Casey basically designed what each screen would look like. And we had them build it out. Once we had the product, we launched our first event in New York and just haven't stopped since. So why don't you tell us about some of the press that you've gotten? It's fun <laughs> to see your business in press. I mean, that's just extraordinary. It's fun to talk to you guys. It's fun to hear people say, I heard about Zig this way. Uh, we had Cosmopolitan Magazine call us the most wholesome dating app out there. Oh, which well, that's very pr- nice. Coming from Cosmopolitan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know what I was going to ask you. So did your developer, your app developer, come on for free too or did you pay him we started paying him at first and then quickly said we can't really do that yet we're still fundraising and he was amazing he said pay me when you can we just did an equity deal he owns part of the company now and he worked for free for the past year how did he do that? Did he have a full-time job somewhere else? Yeah. So all of us came from full-time jobs. So we've been working off of our salaries. Uh, he has a wife that's supporting him. I have a fiance that's supporting me. So uh, all of us have a little bit of help. So how did that transition work? You So you, the app started as sort of a side hustle, right? So you were doing your day job and then gradually you got more and more involved. When did you make the decision to transition full-time to this? And what were the considerations that let you take the leap? As soon as the app was developed, we took the leap. So when we launched the app on the App Store, it took about six months to get it developed. And so after that, we just said, uh, you know, we're full steam ahead. We took the leap. And so how many clients do you have? (laughs) Sure. Including the dogs. Yeah, I'm not sure about how many dogs are on the app. I should double check that. Uh, But but we do Do have... Just let dogs sign up for the app. (laughs) If if they could, absolutely. That would be fun. If they have a credit card, why not? There you go. The app is free, actually, so they don't even need one. But the app is totally free uh, to download. But we have more than 22,000 people who have downloaded the app. Wow. What is the name of the app? Dig the Dog Person's Dating App. Okay. Dig Great. the dog person's dating app. You can search at Dig Dates. You could search uh, just Dig is a little bit harder to find. There are a lot of apps with the word Dig in it. So if you are looking for Dig the dog person's dating app, I'd spell it out. So you were lucky in some ways because you had so much knowledge that a person needs to start a business, and your sister did, and you got the developer to work for free. So how does a normal entrepreneur do that? Like if I invented something. I mean, I have a little bit of marketing knowledge, and we could write the patent on it and trademark it because we have that, but I don't have a developer who will work for free. You don't know. I mean, what you really have to do is take the time to find someone who's just as passionate about you, uh, and especially these accelerator programs and incubators city by city. There's a lot of resources out there where people, you know, maybe they won't do it full time, but they'll do a side project with you. They'll take some equity and they'll um, they'll guide you to the right person. You have to get out there. You have to be making these relationships. It didn't come right away. You know, it took a while. We worked with different development teams. Didn't go great. Right. Uh, And so we made mistakes along the way trying to find the right people. But once we did, there was no stopping us. So what are your plans for marketing now going forward? We are absolutely doing ads, um, but they are super fun. (laughs) All of our ads, like I said, feature adoptable dogs. So when you say ads, you mean? Uh, uh, Like uh, we are being featured on Instagram and Facebook and Google. A lot of social media, for sure. That helps a lot. We're getting a great um, cost per user acquisition there. Uh, So how much money we're putting in, we're not asking you to pay anything. So the ads work really well. You just download it and give it a try, right? Um, But it's still very much focused on partnership in the dog world. So we ask our friends in the dog world, hey, tell your single customers and followers about us and we'll trade you. So we'll, instead of paying uh, for advertisement on Dig, you can trade us and share information about your company on our daily deal and then share information about us to your customers and followers. So building up that relationship um, with the pet industry and the local pet companies in the cities we go has been a huge, huge help. That's great. And so how do you handle privacy? I would imagine that um, a lot of people are very sensitive about the information that people can see about their dogs. 
And um, so how do you handle the, the privacy aspect of the app? Sure. We are certainly not encouraging you to put anything you don't want to put down about your dog or about yourself. But also, my background is not only in TV news reporting and nonprofit world, but I have my master's in homeland security and emergency response management. And I've taken classes and focused on cybersecurity. From the start, we've made sure that your data is not going anywhere. So if things go south, you're in good hands with Lee. She's going to make sure that everything is handled in homeland security kind of way. <laughs> That's the idea. That's the idea. I have, I have kind of a weird question. Maybe you can answer this. What is the most popular breed on your site? Do you know? On our site, that's a good question. It's very different by city. So oh. across oh. the country, um, you're seeing, I can tell you, the most popular dog name is Bella. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of Bellas. <laughs> There's a lot of French Bulldogs. Um, but it definitely varies city by city. Wow, oh, that's, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we've come to the end of our segment here. You're listening to Passage to Profit with Richard and Elizabeth Gerhardt. I'd just like to bring up a subject we've touched on before. Sometimes our pitch presenters don't have protection on their products or ideas, so we always advise them to get protection before they come on the show. Ideally, no one should talk publicly about their ideas until they have some kind of protection, a patent, some sort of you know intellectual property tool that will help them protect it. If you've disclosed your idea already, though, you may still be able to get some help, and you can just contact us. Richard is very good at strategizing to get around any kind of problem like that. Yeah, if there has been a public disclosure a little earlier maybe than you had anticipated, uh, there are ways to deal with that if you're trying to protect your idea with a patent. And uh, we can also help with trademarks and copyrights as well. So, you know, it's always best if you can hire a professional to help you, but if you're just wondering what to do, you can call me, Richard Gearhart, at 908-273-0700 and uh, refer to Passage to Profit, and I'll give you a free half-hour consultation. So you can leverage Richard's 30 years of experience in intellectual property law to your advantage. And one thing I'd like to add, everyone at Gearhart Law, lawyer or not, is bound by attorney-client privilege. It extends to the entire law firm, so no one in the firm will ever reveal your ideas to anyone else without your permission. That's right. Your ideas are safe with Gerhardt Law. And now, a word from our sponsor. What are entrepreneurs' most valuable assets? Their passion and ideas. We can't protect your passion, but we can protect your ideas. Trust Gearheart Law to protect your ideas with premier patent, trademark, and copyright services. There's never been a better time to start your own business. Contact us at GearheartLaw.com. At Gearheart Law, we have years of experience protecting entrepreneurs' ideas and brands using patent, trademark, and copyright protection. So if you have a new consumer product, a new software application that you're planning to to build or sell, or a brand or company name that you want to protect, contact the experts at Gearheart Law, www.gearheartlaw.com. Don't let the wrong protection strategy ruin your business. All of our attorneys are passionate about protection and are licensed and qualified to represent you before the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Don't start your project without calling us first. Contact Gearheart Law on the web at G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-L-A-W.com. Together, we can change the world. This ad has been read by a non-attorney spokesperson. Passage to Profit continues with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. And our special guest, Lee Isaacson. It is time for our first pitch. So our first pitch is by Gracie and Wani Benedith. Welcome. Hi. Hello. My name is Gracie Benedith, and I am the CEO and founder of Braille Code, Inc. Hello. My name is Wani, and I am the inspiration behind Braille Code. We actually created uh, this, our our company is called Braille Code, Inc., and it was created and inspired by Wani, who was visually impaired. Wani was born with septo-optic nerve dysplasia, and he's legally blind and what? Wonderfully made. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so I created patches uh, that uh, can help him get dressed a little more efficiently, and the patches are made in Braille, and they're actually raised to be felt in braille for him to read it has directional cues that say left right and back also we did an innovative book what is it called wani what's cool about braille code school yeah <laughs> and that book is about three different mices of different type of um, visual impairments and they are uh, actually speaking about their first day of school and what it's like to live in a sighted world right yes What's your favorite part of the book? 
It's about inclusion right. of the sighted and blind and visually impaired world. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, the book is loosely based on my characteristics. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it must be a good book then. <laughs> yeah. And also what we do is we go into schools as well. Uh, we go to sighted schools, and Wani gives a brief um, history about Braille, about Louis Braille, and then what is it that you do um, actually when you go into the school? I read to them in Braille to see, um, for them to experience what it's like to see a blind or visually impaired person read. We have a lot of fun doing it as well. That's wonderful. And so you have these little patches that anybody can put in their clothes. And if you know Braille, you can feel them and you can tell which shoe is your left shoe, which shoe is your right shoe. And then you you can dress yourself and nobody has to tell you and you look good. And the book is, is fairly new. I wrote it last year and then we actually started selling it uh, this August, this summer. That's great. So how do you plan to market the book going forward? Well, you can find it on Amazon. You can actually find it as well on my website, brailcodeinc.com. And we actually do a couple of book signings and we're trying to get into the major bookstores as well. That's the plan. We really want to go into the major bookstores because there's no Braille books in the major bookstores. We want to be the first to do that. Yeah, Yeah. that's fascinating. And the patches, I think, are extraordinarily smart. I have a question for you, Wani. Mm -hmm. When you show the patches to your friends, what do they say about it? They may think that it's a very smart idea. I would imagine, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, Wani, have you made a lot of friends going into schools and, and, and reading the book? Most of the time we read at my sister's school and <laughs> in lots of different schools and they know me for performances and stuff like that. So this is just the beginning for you from what I understand. You have many dreams and aspirations and one of them is to be a singer. Can you sing for like two seconds for us? Broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round and you can't find the fighter. But I see it in you, so we're going to walk it out and move Perfect. Perfect. That was really nice. So, And you also told me that you play four different musical instruments. Is that right? Yeah. I'm very impressed because I don't play any. (laughs) And I have no excuse except I don't have a music brain. Gracie, I'm sorry to jump in, but I just can't imagine how much the patches help Wani, but also really help you, especially in that busy morning time with now three children, right? Can you describe just the transformation and maybe, uh, you know, was there a day or a moment where you realized that this is absolutely something he needed for himself? Well, before the third one was born, the patches were already out, you know, so I had two at the time and she's four years younger than Wani. Wani at the time was, he was six years old. And it was a time that um, there were therapists coming in, there were things going on. And I was then seeing how therapists were working with Wani. Uh, there was things that didn't make sense to me. And uh, the questions that I asked, they, weren't, they didn't have certain things for visually impaired children. And I'm like, how is it that they're going to function? How do, how do they, you know, so it just, things started brewing, you know, until one day I was a legal secretary. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't tell you guys, I was a legal secretary for over like 12 years yeah mm, and okay <laughs> <laughs> you poor <Yeah>. thing <laughs> <laughs> yes and and um i life got really really hectic for me wani's bus uh company went into strike and oh. it was really really bad and uh things got worse and they they laid me off and literally three weeks later uh, i had an epiphany i actually uh was sitting in my living room and and, and i saw patches i saw things uh for I just saw a lot of Braille in different articles of clothing. And I was like, oh, my God. So I decided then to just fly with it. I just started drawing and writing things down and and going back to the law firm because it was an amicable departure, if you want to say. Mm-hmm. And the patent lawyers then spoke to me and led me to oh, the right people, wonderful. which was awesome. That's really great. Yeah. It's just amazing how sometimes at just the right moment, Things start to come to you mm-hmm. and the, how the creative process works and how you can be inspired. And now 
you've really started um, a business that can have a positive effect for so many people. So many people. So, yeah, we totally want to support you. Thank so on that. you're selling these right now, right? Yes, I'm selling along with the book on BrailleCodeBrands.com. Okay, how much do they cost for a set for shoes? Actually, right now for three pairs of shoes, and it's $20, I believe, on the website. What I've sold the most is the book. That I've sold a lot. Everyone's really, really um, liking the innovation of the book and how a sighted child doesn't, they do not own a book like this they don't have a book like this to understand another a child with special needs like that do you see a company like zappos or another shoe company working with you to take this and maybe incorporate it in the shoe from the start and take your idea and just work with you and run with it that is the plan i would love yeah, zappos if you're listening yes yeah. yeah. exactly. or nike yeah yeah. Nike. Yeah. yeah yeah no i just can see how important it is from the start to not have to worry about oh. something like this i'm thinking about myself as an 11 year old you have two mittens that you're clipping on to your yes. jacket there and you i go. can see and i would lose them every day i That's mean right. i you just you're asking kids to do so much and you're providing them with this incredible incredible opportunity to take over for themselves. And yeah. I just, I'm, I'm truly inspired. It was very important for me for Wani to be independent. That was the main thing. I wanted to see him get dressed on his own. He is always the first one dressed out of the party of five. He's wow. the one dressed first, sitting, waiting for us. Isn't that right, Wani? Every day? You bet. <laughs> <laughs> Every day. I mean, we just look, Wani's already dressed. He's like, I'll, I'll be in the living room. I'll be waiting. So we're going to have to wrap up, unfortunately. You know me, I could talk all day. But luckily, you do have a patent application filed on this idea. So if you shop it around, you are protected. So you are listening to Passage to Profit on WOR 710 with Richard Elizabeth Gearhart and our special guest, Lee Isaacson. Hi, I'm Lisa Askley, the inventress, founder, CEO, and president of Inventing A to Z. I've been inventing products for over 38 years. Hundreds of products later and dozens of patents. I help people develop products and put them on the market from concept to fruition. I bring them to some of the top shopping networks in the world. QVC, HSN, Evine Live, and retail stores. Have you ever said to yourself, someone should invent that thing? Well, I say, why not make it you? If you want to know how to develop a product from concept to fruition the right way, contact me, Lisa Askeles, the inventress. Go to inventing. Toz.com, inventing a to z.com. Email me, Lisa at inventing a to z.com. Treat yourself to a day chock full of networking, education, music, shopping, and fun. Go to my website, inventing a to z.com. Now back to Passage to Profit. Once again, Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. We're on to our second pitch presentation this evening, this time with Griffin Petticord from knockbrands.com. Griffin, you have two minutes. Go. Thank you guys for having me. I'm CTO and co-founder of Knock Brands. We work with big brands to empower them to offer three-day free in-home tryouts of new products. So we handle all the unsexy side of that. What that means <laughs> is we handle the circular logistics. So as a customer, if you see an interesting product and it's advertised through our service, then you can try that product. If you're in New York City, within two hours it's delivered. You try the product for free for three days. And then at the end of the three days, we come pick it up. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to package anything. What we do is then we take that product, repackage it, and bring it to the next person the same day. So a brand will send us 100 products, and we can reach 4,000 homes in 60 days. This is because we see a big shift in marketing spend into experiential marketing. I live in Soho here. If you walk around, you see brands spending a lot of money on experiential marketing. One of our customers is a really high-end speaker, and they have this beautiful Soho showroom that looks like no one's living room you've ever seen. And you can stand there and have the showman lean over you as he plays you music that you don't like to try to experience <laughs> it. But we did the math with them, and they're spending about $1,000 per impression, physical impression on the product, and we are significantly cheaper. Studies have found now that if someone has a positive experience with a the product, they'll tell 17 people. Those 17 people tell another two people. So there's nothing more intimate than an experience in your house, playing with the product the way you would, 
if you were playing with a phone, actually using it, not just holding your friend's phone. I love it. You know what? I order everything almost. I, I hardly ever go to the mall anymore. But I do order shoes from Zappos, and I send some of them back because they don't fit right, but I have to send them back. I love that you pick it up. Oh, my gosh. Exactly. Actually, there's a huge problem with returns all over the Internet, all over the world, and it's causing issues. It's causing a massive loss in money, and it's terrible for the environment. About 30% of everything purchased online, of everything, is returned. In retail or clothing, it's about 70%. And what people are doing is they're taking advantage of free returns. So they'll buy multiple versions of a product, multiple speakers, and then they return the ones that they don't like. Well, you cannot sell a previously used product as new, so you lose 40% of value right off the bat, and then you deal with lag between getting it to the next customer. So if you return that speaker, the next person to get it will get it on average 180 days later. So you mentioned experiential marketing. Maybe you could describe that a little bit more because it's kind of a new term. Certainly. So experiential marketing is actually having time with a product, using it, sharing it with friends, sharing it with family. The way that most people are doing it now is they're having showrooms that you can come in and play with the product. Of course, we see this with cell phones. Uh, Apple was the first one to really push it well. So we want to bring that experience into your house because that's not really experiential marketing. That's shiny, expensive marketing. So people get directed to our service through traditional marketing like Instagram ads. Can you explain what your costs are? So I'm picturing you're driving around, you're picking up products from the people you're going to deliver it from, and then to, and then repackaging. Uh, what is everything that goes into your side? Okay, so we handle everything for the brands. All they do is they place the ad, and then our service, we have exclusive deals with courier partners so that we can control the last mile. So you click through an ad from the brand. It goes to our product page. They check out. You put your credit card in, but you're not charged, just so we don't have anyone steal it, um, which doesn't happen, we've actually found. And then we deliver it to you. So you sign for the package. We don't leave it on your doorstep or anything. So our software deals with the couriers and then helps manage all the orders with brands. And what are some products that people are trying this out for? First, you mentioned phones. Are they mostly small products or can you do this with something like a couch? We have not gotten into sofas yet. We mostly... <laughs> <laughs> That would be difficult with a bicycle courier, <laughs> but we would consider it with the right client. Um, so we actually launched this in Berlin about a year ago, and we've done Bluetooth speakers, home appliances. We have a deal with a massive company in Europe that does all different types of home appliances, and they're doing an all-in-one cooker, which I keep picturing as a crock pot. I haven't seen it yet. I know it's not. I know it's very fancy. Uh, we have deals with some phone companies that I don't want to mention. They're not allowed in the U.S. That's for our European side. Mm -hmm. And then we have deals that we're closing with a mobile phone company. And we have a really high-end down jacket. We have all different types of products. But we're a white label service. So you go from a brand's ad or brand's website. They don't need to know that we're involved. But some people do want us to be branded on their website so that they know that there's quality behind it. It'll be there. What if somebody keeps it? You can elect to do that. You have the three days, and on the second night, we send you an email and say, give us feedback. Do you want to keep it? Or because these are products being cycled through, we'll bring you a brand new one, and your card's on file, so you just pay and click that button. So you get to choose. And for brands, if someone doesn't want to keep it, we found that a majority of the people using these products are giving positive feedback, and they're not going on Amazon and leaving negative reviews. What motivated you to start this business? I'm, it's a pretty creative, out-of-the-box uh, approach. This business evolved with the business partners because I actually had a previous company that I sold shares in that was a music app. Uh, we did that with Bobby. He's the CEO. I'm CTO. Uh, we split ways after that for a little bit. I opened a yoga studio for a while. Um, oh, that's completely related to this. Yeah, but, completely yeah. related. And then I closed the yoga studio because it was a lovely, amazing experience, but it was nine hours of yoga a day. <laughs> 
Wearing what? Uh, <laughs> so at my own studio, I did not have to wear Speedos. <laughs> when did you have to wear the Speedo? <laughs> Somehow I cannot avoid this. <laughs> so in 2010, I won the International Yoga Championship. I, how do they judge yoga-ing? Good question. <laughs> I guess based on what you wear. If it's a Speedo, then... No. <laughs> so I do answer this about six times a day as well. Uh, the yoga competition, they don't judge your spirit. There's no white linen or incense. It is treated like gymnastics. So the yoga asanas, there's a core set of asanas that people understand, and there's variations on that. What you do is you have three minutes, and you go on stage, and you have five compulsory postures and two optionals. So then it's out of 10 for each posture. When I competed, there was also a grace score which my friends would have never thought I would do well in. <laughs> wow. So how did that experience influence this company you're starting now? So the influence is actually mostly related to culture for us and sustainability, of course, being raised by a Green Party mother and being in the yoga community, there's a lot of pressure to change the world for the better. So Bobby and Renato, the two original founders, I actually joined later. I was looking at the company from the investment side because after the yoga studio, I had a really weird job where I worked with ultra rich people to help them get their life and mind under control and then diversify their investments. Wow. So, yeah, it was it was weird. Great. It was private jets every day and going to investigate businesses. After four trips, I said, I'm quitting and joining this company again, rejoining my best friends. So. Awesome. So it's knock, N-O-K, brands.com. How did you come up with the name? It's like knocking on a door. Oh, our, our C Corp is knocking ink. All right, okay. that's merely suggestive in the trademark world. So if you we haven't gotten a trademark on that yet, you should do okay. Uh, once again, Griffin Petticord with knockbrands.com, and you can find out all about them by visiting their website. You're listening to Passage to Profit with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. We'll be right back. There's never been a better time to start your own business. The opportunities are infinite and only limited by your imagination and enthusiasm. At Gearheart Law, we believe the most successful companies all have one thing in common. They start with a solid foundation first. Gearheart Law has years of experience protecting entrepreneurs, ideas, and brands using patent, trademark, and copyright protection. So if you have a new consumer product, a new software application that you're planning to build or sell, or a brand or company name that you want to protect, contact the experts at www.gearheartlaw.com. Our professionals will create a custom strategy designed to fit your needs and your budget. All of our attorneys are passionate about protection, licensed and qualified to represent you before the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Don't start your project without calling us first. Visit gearheartlaw.com. Together, we can change the world. Visit G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-L-A-W.com. This that has been read by a non-attorney spokesperson. Passage to Profit continues with Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart. Our third and final pitch is something near and dear to my heart, and our pitcher is Michelle Valdesby. You have two minutes. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle Valdesby, and I'm a 74-year-old cat lady who almost had to give up her kids because due to my severe arthritis, I could not bend, and therefore I could not care for them. So I had to do something, and that something was invent something because it wasn't out there. And Ben No More created the Little Lift. Now you say to yourself, how does a 74-year-old woman decide to do something like this? Well, I have six children, two that are 24 years old, Oliver and Alvin. I have one that is seven, my Diamond, one that is five, my Sophie, one that's three, my red, and my newly one, Muffin, who's one years old. And it got to the point where I couldn't care for them because I couldn't bend to clean their litter box. And I said, you know, there's got to be something out here. I mean, I looked everywhere to find something that could help me, that could help this mom of her six children keep her animals. There was nothing out there. I had to figure out a way. And like they say, the old adage, necessity is the mother of invention. So I doodled, and I looked up on the government website, and I looked at what a patent is and a design and utilities. I haven't a clue. I am a novice. But I did go to a 
invention club. And I met some wonderful people who were inventing different things. And I got there early, so I was able to talk to the president of, of the club. And he explained a lot of things to me. And, and I said, well, do you have any professional people here, uh, you know, uh, a patent attorney or a patent agent? And he says, yes. And that's how I met my teammate, Mark Arnett. He gave me his card. I never got a chance to talk to him. I just took the card and went home and thought about everything I saw and felt. And I said, oh, my gosh, you really going to do this thing? It's either that or give the kids up. <laughs> I, hey, it was a journey. I said, you did a lot of things in life. You retired. You, you, you've given your all and you're on a new adventure. What do you got to lose? It took me a couple of months before I reached out to him. And I explained to him, and we talked and talked, and he made no promises. He says, well, I don't know what you want to do with this. I said, I, I need help in the house, and I want to keep my kids. Let's try to do this thing. And he and Tom, my teammates, they built my litter lift. I don't have to bend no more. That's perfect. And I have to, full disclosure here, Mark Annette is a good friend of Richard and myself. We know him from the New Jersey entrepreneurial community and a really nice guy and a very smart guy, too. Uh, so the litter lift is actually, I don't know, Richard, you probably have to describe this. Well, it's a, like a cart that raises up. It's electronically activated. And you can put your litter in there, and then when it's time to clean the litter box, right, Michelle, you just push the button, and it just magically raises up, and you can do what you need to do, and then you can fill it, and you can push the button, and it goes back down again, right? So people it's, who have a hard time manipulating the litter can uh, make sure their litter boxes are clean without bending over. And I had it designed this way because I know for a fact that trying to bend and trying to move items to sweep or mop it's very difficult. So that to have this litter box on wheels when it's ascended is a blessing. And to be able to move it from room to room is even a better blessing because now I don't have to have that box in a place where my company could see or what have you. The litter lift is so unique because the pan lifts out. It's easy to scoop. I'm just amazed with it because my kids... Every time I clean it, there's another little body going to the box. It's, I mean, it, it's like they line up. And we all completely understand when you say your kids. I mean, you, you know, my, my business with Dig, the dog person's dating app, we hear it from cat people all the time, too. These are really your children, and this is a huge problem. Uh, we work with an incredible local organization in, in New York that's called Paws New York, where they send volunteers to help uh, either elderly or people who are sick keep their pets in their home by walking their dogs or changing the litter. But you can't rely on that all the time. And your product really feels this need that we hear from so many pet owners. Let me just say this. In the United States alone, there are 40 million households. We're talking about 35% who own at least one cat, and they're females. And the largest percentage are owned by the single female, especially in Portland, Oregon. We're looking at 9.9%. We're looking at Seattle, Washington at 9.3%. And our neighbor across the river there, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 87 But the kicker... <laughs> is that married women with cats outlive their spouses. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble <laughs> I'm going to live a long time. <laughs> well, well you probably, so, you've lived a better life, so. so. No, Michelle, I have to take one issue with you, issue with one point with you. Do you really think a person can own a cat? Uh, my cats own me. <laughs> you know, Elizabeth, you're absolutely correct. They meant they. You're absolutely right. They rule my life. They rule my life. You're you just know, the landlord at some point. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm the caretaker like mommy wears the vittles. Okay? <laughs> my oldest cats, you know, they can barely walk. And they're saying, hurry up. And I'm saying, well, I'm old. I'm on my way. <laughs> and they said, you know what? We're 24 years old and we're older than you, so suck it up. <laughs> Let me just say this. I've talked to a lot. I've heard a lot of stories. I've talked to a lot of people who had to give up their kids. They give up their kids because of 
uh, of arthritis or some other diseases that keeps them from bending or, or, or walking or what have you. And they have to make these choices, okay? And, and, and the choice is usually to give them up. And what happens? They go into depression. And you don't have to be old to go into depression, okay? Because we, we, we have animals that keep us alive. We don't like to say that, but that is the gosh darn truth. They keep us alive. They give us longevity. We think we're doing for them, but they're actually doing for us, okay? And and I'm saying disabilities run every age, every gender, every nationality. And whether it's temporary or whether it's permanent, when we have animals, there's nothing we wouldn't do for them. And to be able to have a product like the Little Lift, I mean, Richard and Elizabeth, you know for a fact because you're in the business, the first patent was given out by George Washington in 1790, okay? And here we are in 2018, and we have the first little lift. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, With that, that, we're going to have to end the segment. I'm sorry, this has really been fascinating. So I want to say a couple things. First of all, you don't have to be older to use this. Everybody can use it. The litter box is on the floor for the cats. It pops up for you to empty it and goes back down. And you can go see it at bendnomore.com. So thank you very much, Michelle. Thank You're listening you. to Passage to Profit I'm on WOR710. What are entrepreneurs' most valuable assets? Their passion and ideas. We can't protect your passion, but we can protect your ideas. Trust Gearheart Law to protect your ideas with premier patent, trademark, and copyright services. There's never been a better time to start your own business. Contact us at GearheartLaw.com. At Gearheart Law, we have years of experience protecting entrepreneurs' ideas and brands using patent, trademark, and copyright protection. So if you have a new consumer product, a new software application that you're planning to build or sell, or a brand or company name that you want to protect, contact the experts at Gearheart Law, www.gearheartlaw.com. Don't let the wrong protection strategy ruin your business. All of our attorneys are passionate about protection and are licensed and qualified to represent you before the United States Patent and Trademark Office. Don't start your project without calling us first. Contact Gearheart Law on the web at G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T. T-L-A-W.com. Together, we can change the world. This ad has been read by a non-attorney spokesperson. Now more with Richard and Elizabeth. Passage to Profit. And remember, everyone, to go to Passage to Profit at GearheartLaw.com, spelled G-E-A-R-H-A-R-T-L-A-W, and vote for your favorite project. So to summarize, we had Gracie and Wani Benedith with BrailleCodeBrands.com, B-R-A-I-L-L-E-C-O-D-E, Brands.com. And that was the book and the shoe inserts, so people know how to put on their shoes, which shoe goes on which foot. And then next, we had Griffin Petticord, who pitched Knock Brands, N-O-K, Brands.com, which lets you try out products for three days. You don't even ever have to leave your house if you don't want to, because they drop it off and pick it up. And finally, we had Michelle Valdesby with BendNoMore.com, the cat litter box that comes to you. Now, Google Passage to Profit and make your choice. Remember, you can only vote once, and you have until next Sunday at 8 p.m. to vote. This evening's pitch contestants will receive a Passage to Profit t-shirt, and the best overall vote-getter for the show will receive an Amazon gift card valued at $25. (laughs) Well, before we sign off, I'd like to say thanks to everyone who participated today. We feel like we're looking at the future. That's great, and I agree they were wonderful, and I want to say thanks again to our guest, Lee Isaacson, who took us over the top in so many ways. Do you have any final words of wisdom for us, Lee? If you're single, make sure you tell all your friends and download Dig, the dog person's dating app. (laughs) Yes, I will tell my single friends. You never know what can happen. I'll tell my single dogs, too. (laughs) (laughs) And remember, if you're having any issues or thoughts about a project and you want to know about the intellectual property, you can call Richard at 908-273-0700 for confidential help with protecting your project. And we'd like to thank our media maven, Kenya Gibson, our producer, Noah Fleischman, Rob the Engineer, and the whole iHeart team. And don't forget to join us next week for another excellent speaker and another round of pitches. You can start thinking about what your next pitch will be. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This is Richard and Elizabeth Gearhart on iHeart Radio with Passage to Profit, WOR710, the voice of New York. Mm-hmm.